probably uh, some kind of a hunk of a guy because you know that time he had this long hair, uh, hippie kind of look. I always liked her when I met her in college, but never, never proposed to her because maybe because of some ego and all that. I I remember uh, you know the. I mean, the first thing I remember is her smile, which is what I like the most. Uh, I had seen him volunteering a lot in uh, a church, and I really, you know, recognized that he's the man of God. Actually, I have more weird habits than him. <laughs> I think the way he uses his toothpaste. Yeah. He's very organized and disciplined. So that's not weird. Uh, that is not weird. That's so. Like it's That's like, like the best you uh, could expect, right? <laughs> she likes to cut onions and mix chili and salt and eat. Even though you make the most delicious food and keep it on the table, she'll go and chop onions. I find him to be, you know, kind of too meticulous. This is kind of weird. Like, you know, which side you put the towel to dry every every day, you know? I find that kind of weird. There's a, there's a science to it, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you later. <laughs> Obviously her, like, picking up the fight. <laughs> oh, oh, really? I think she's very patient, so normally even if I pick up a fight, she forgives. He's the first one to pick a fight. And to forgive also, right? <laughs> Not really. Actually, no, we, we, I think we're mixed, right? Sometimes we do fight, but then one thing is like, we never ever let the sun go down on our anger, you know? Even if though we don't verbally say sorry to each other, uh, at night we probably just just, just, just a hand over each other or something which just says that, you know, I'm sorry you've forgiven each other. Both are equal. Sometimes it's, um, it's mom and sometimes it's dad. He's very strict. After they've gone to bed and he like, you know, gets into their room every night and sometimes I like wonder what, what he's doing. And then he would go, uh, you know, into their rooms and I would see him like, you know, put, put his hands over them and pray over them. So I think that's the sweetest dad moment. Uh, there are times when I'm like, I'm beating myself, I, I ought to do this, I should have done that, you know. But then when I look at them, I'm like, I mean, I've got a bigger father. So why worry? So that's one thing which I've learned from the kids. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong. Uh, we've been having some very interesting conversations on uh, marriage and uh, family. As uh, we are taught in scripture, you know, marriage uh, was instituted by God uh, for man and it was designed by God to be a good thing in our lives. Something where we could enjoy uh, companionship, where we could enjoy the goodness and the richness uh, of God's uh, uh, favor and blessing and actually live out the relationship uh, and the benefits and joys of a, 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 a relationship that God designed for us. Uh, to help us understand more about marriage and how to build strong marriages, I have on the program today uh, Jean George, who is a professional mental health counselor. Uh, she has a master's degree in uh, psychiatric social work. She began as a school co coordinator, uh, spent time as a child development coordinator and has uh, also uh, worked as a consultant uh, in the Department of Psychiatry at a medical college hospital here in Bangalore. And uh, she currently has her own uh, private practice and she has spent a lot of time working uh, with people from corporate backgrounds uh, in, in these areas and health and life issues uh, and, and mental health and life issues and, and has served many of them. Uh, we also have Ranjini Isaac who, who has a master's in uh, uh, medical and psych psychiatric social work. Uh, she's worked uh, in both medical and psych psychiatric uh, settings. She's specialized, also specialized in the area of uh, uh, age education and spent a long time uh, in the area of uh, serving students and, uh, and their families, counseling them both on one-on-one -on -one and group therapy uh, sessions, group family therapy sessions. And both of them are uh, serving as part of our church ministry uh, Christmas counseling. Uh, they've spent a lot of time working with young couples getting ready for marriage and for people who've been married and trying to, you know, resolve issues and challenges that they've run into uh, in, the, uh, in their married life. So thank you for, so much for being with us on the program today. 
I want to just, uh, you know, get right into talking about, uh, you know, just living this life of marriage. You know, two people uh, with great expectations, they get married, uh, they begin this journey of life together. Uh, of course, we're talking about believers who, uh, you know, who have the Word of God, who have knowledge and instruction of the Word of God. And, and yet, you know, because of all the practical challenges that we go through in life, there are storms in life, there are situations that come up in life. I think it's right to say that almost every marriage will face some rough weather along the way. I mean, I don't think there's any marriage that's exempt from difficult situations. But uh, let's try to address uh, some key areas in which I know uh, people run into problems. And I think, uh, you know, a, a common area is in the, the whole area of communication. At some point, uh, some things happen. The husband, the wife, they tend to withdraw from each other and communication tends to break down. And so I think that's probably the starting point uh, uh, very often in, in, in uh, uh, problems in marriages. So, you know, from your experience, could you just speak to us on, you know, uh, what are some of the kinds of problems, communication problems that you've uh, encountered? And also, you know, uh, if you could just speak to us on, on what the Bible teaches us. Uh, on this, uh, on, on how and how we can apply biblical principles that are there in the Word of God uh, in this area of communication uh, in marriage. Anyone can, you know, just go ahead. Like you rightly said, Pastor, uh, communication is really the key to a good marriage. And uh, it um, also depends on um, how uh, the level of communication that you have. Mm. Most often, uh, I think, people think they are communicating to each other. and that's an area that's always taken for granted. Mm -hmm. If you typically look at a husband and wife, one of the biggest complaints in the marriage relationship will be, he doesn't listen to me, you know, listening. listening. So listening is uh, something that is not natural to any one of us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a personality trait. Listening is a skill that one has to learn. Mm -hmm. And when a wife complains saying that he's not listening, what she really means is that he may be hearing me, but he's not giving me that undivided attention that you need. So really what um, listening means is to listen with, not just uh, to someone, just with your ears, but with your eyes and listen to their body language mm. and look for those feelings that are being expressed through that body language. Mm. I think there's a huge gap in this area. So that's one of the reasons why spouses feel they are not being heard. Okay. They are not being listened to. Mm. Uh, so I think it, it is important for each of the spouse to give that undivided attention. Mm. And this also helps them to increase in their intimacy towards each other. So instead of staying on with just uh, casual communication uh, and talking about highs and byes and thank you and sorry and all of these things, apart from that, and then talking about mundane things, mm. I think spouses should make that time to make that one-on-one -on -one connection, spend time together to improve their listening to each other. And I think that that is very, very important mm -hmm. right. in a relationship. Right. To reiterate what uh, Ranjini said, when we look at communication, it's a two-way street. So as she rightly pointed out that listening is one part of it. Mm. It's also being able to express, to be able to genuinely express uh, your ideas, your thoughts uh, in communication. So sometimes what happens in marriage is there is a breakdown in marriage because there's a fear of uh, being criticized, there's a fear of being judged, uh, or uh, they, they just uh, go silent. They do, not, uh, they do not communicate. And that definitely breaks uh, the relationship uh, a lot more. Um, so where, how, how do we really help uh, couples like this is to help them to see how they can express just as much. So how do they express their hurt? How do they express their feelings? Mm. So when you look at the Bible, it specifically says in Proverbs, it talks about how the tongue of the wise man promotes health. So it, uh, it's important with the words that uh, uh, couples use towards each other. Mm. Uh, is it something that builds or is it something that breaks? Okay. Uh, so, so helping couples to look of the uh, essence of their words as well as the power that the words have mm. um, as they communicate. So that's something that God really um, uh, specifies. So I think the whole of Proverbs, you have different ways in which um, uh, 
communication is uh, is uh, exemplified right. and um, expression is also exemplified right. equally right. yeah so i think what you're pointing out is that uh, just developing the ability to listen very carefully like james tells us you know let every man be slow to speak but you know swift to hear just spend a lot more time or be first to hear and give that a priority and also this this listening uh, with the with the intent of understanding and uh, doing something about it, not just saying yeah, I heard sounds that <laughs> came my way, yeah. And uh, and then the other part is just to uh, continue to express, continue to speak, and and to speak in ways that are very positive. You know, speak words that that you know, like Ephesians tells us to speak words that bring grace to the hearers and just edifies and uh, lifts people up. And I think that's uh, that's so important. And and, and, the, and the beautiful thing is. Uh, all of this is in the Bible. You know, God has taught us uh, on, on areas that we really need, and we just need to take those things, apply them into uh, the context of marriage, and in terms of communication. And and I and I feel, and I, um, I feel that you know this is an area that we can all keep on growing, keep on improving, uh, uh, making things better. Now, uh, another aspect would be, of course, you know, uh, this whole thing about learning to resolve conflicts. Conflicts are bound to happen because there are two separate individuals who come with backgrounds that are different, experiences that are different, uh, ways of thinking that are different. And so they're not necessarily going to see uh, in, in alignment on everything. There's going to be conflict. So the, uh, the, the problem, I guess, happens when people try to go about trying to resolve conflicts in a wrong way. And, and what would be these these wrong ways that you've you've observed? You know, the wrong ways that people try to resolve their conflicts. That it's whether it's just minor disagreements or sometimes it could be something more serious. But just the wrong approach to resolving conflicts. Uh, could you just highlight that for us? Sometimes um, the easiest thing to resolve is maybe a, a very impulsive way of just getting very aggressive. Mm. So the first emotion that really comes out when when there's hurt feelings is anger. Anger. So invariably you see uh, couples um, having a shouting match, mm. you know, they're trying to raise each, I mean the conversation begins like that and then it's, the volumes increase and then soon you'll see that, you know, uh, whoever has a louder volume is always a winner, the other person just, you know, shuts down and mm. probably, you know, um, recedes. Um, so being ab aggressive is one of the ways in which most people handle uh, conflicts. They mm. think. If they raise their voice, the problem is solved, everything settles down, but we know that the problem is not resolved, but it's just gone inside into our hearts mm. where uh, both parties are hurt, maybe one damaged more than the other. And that is definitely going to cause a level of bitterness and uh, cause that kind of barrier and that pushing away from each other mm. is bound to happen. So being aggressive is the commonest way in which uh, spouses uh, try to resolve, resolve or think they are resolving. Right. Uh, That's definitely a very wrong way to it is, try it to is, it is. Uh, resolve it things. Is, yeah, it just is. Um, yeah. I'm just reminded of those verses. Uh, one that's in James that says the the wrath of man or the anger that man operates in it doesn't fulfill the righteousness of God. It only causes us to go and do you know wrong things. And again, there in Ephesians it says you know uh, be angry, but do not sin. And don't let the sun go down on your anger. I mean, get it, deal with it before uh, uh, the, the day ends. Yeah. So, uh, just being impulsive, aggressive, definitely is not the right way to try to solve uh, conflicts. Yeah, Anjin, do you want to add uh, anything to what Ranjini said on on this? This is the wrong way that people go about trying to resolve conflicts. Pastor, during conflicts, there is a surge of emotions. Right. So, um, the couples get to be angry. They get to be uh, hurt. They 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 you know a lot of them are probably just depressed mm. and the other side of the spectrum as Ranjini said was you know one part is aggression the other part is where couples just suppress their feelings they just shut down right. they do not uh, express what is going on inside of them uh, and what happens is over time you know things just uh, just get to normal mm. but then it's the, the conflict is pushed under the carpet mm. and it comes out later at another time of conflict when these emotions surge in again uh, so it's it, the feelings are just bottled over and over, and there's there's a point of time that it just pops, and then uh, uh, anger becomes uh, prime there. 
uh, in addition to that, uh, sometimes couples just do not talk about it. So, the, so we, we've seen couples where they've had a silent treatment for almost months together, where they mm. just do not talk over an issue. And when, the, when, when you come to resolve it, they actually don't even remember what the issue was about. Mm. So these are definitely wrong ways because it brings in a lot of hurt and pain that just gets accumulated over, uh, yeah. over time. Mm. Yeah, so I think what you've pointed out is there's three wrong ways. One is being very aggressive, uh, the other one is suppression, and the other, third one I think you pointed out was just to ignore, you know, and just pretend there is no problem. And uh, neither of it, I mean, none of these are the right ways to uh, handle conflict. But now let's just look at scripture and uh, a lot of things that have been taught to us in scripture. Uh, how do we take these? And so, what, what can we say as uh, you know, we let's just call them biblical guidelines, you know, that we could apply in the context of marriage, that we could share with couples on, you know, this is how the Bible tells us to resolve conflicts. Of course, it, they could apply to any kind of human relationship, but uh, specifically in the, in the area of marriage, a marriage relationship. Uh, what, is, what would be biblical guidelines or principles that we apply trying to resolve conflicts? How would you work with couples and help them resolve conflicts? It is to do with the heart, Pastor. So the Word of God says very clearly that out of the fullness of your heart mm. comes forth all the issues of life. Right. So the emphasis really is my own heart. Uh, where is my heart in Earth. this conflict? Mm. So it's important for couples to examine their own hearts uh, before they try to resolve uh, a conflict with the, op with the wife or the husband. Um, so uh, we encourage them to uh, what we call as preparing your heart before God, um, going before God and God knows everything mm -hmm. where you actually go into a time of confessing those things that um, have accumulated over a period of time probably and, and the hurts and the pain and whatever it is, you bear your heart to God and allow the Holy Spirit to do that sanctifying work within you and uh, allow the love of God to flow back mm. because when you're going through these emotions, you don't feel any love for your spouse. And, and that's when you really need to depend on God to ask for a fresh, uh, you know, um, anointing of a spirit and, and, and a sanctification that should happen, right. a heart preparation. And the Holy Spirit actually empowers mm. um, the person to receive this love and forgiveness. Uh, so we believe that God is uh, always wanting us to repent and he's always there to take us back right. when there's things. So we ask them to go through this process and then ask God for wisdom about how do I deal with this issue? Uh, is this something that I need to really confront, um, discuss, resolve or is it something that I'm making too much out of? Mm -hmm. So I think God gives us the discernment and the wisdom to see whether this is, uh, to pick what are the things that need to be issued. So, there is some sanctification happening within each one of us. And then we go on to see if we need to work it out with the spouse. So the first three steps of this process of conflict resolution would be just working on my or one's own heart mm. before they actually discuss it with the spouse. Yeah. So you're, you're pointing out, you know, first I start with my own heart before God. And then I ask God for wisdom and, uh, uh, and ask, ask him to show me how to go about uh, addressing a matter that if maybe it needs to be addressed, maybe it's something maybe trivial, I need to let it go. Or, and so that wisdom to come from God and how to go about the approach uh, that I need personally to, uh, I think that's like the preparation in order to resolve those conflicts. And each, if each, each uh, uh, spouse goes before God and does that, I think then they can come together with, uh, you know, with, with, with the hopes to actually working on things. And then from there, you know, what, what else? What else can they do? Uh, I, I think as, like you rightly said, Pastor, it's a heart preparation first of an individual. Because unless the heart is prepared, they cannot come together mm. uh, to deal with the issue. Uh, but a heart preparation is not the only thing that is essential. You need to follow it up with an action. Right. So that's, that's where uh, the couple comes together and lovingly discusses mm. whatever the conflict has been. So as you even said, so they kind of gauge to see is it something that you can let go? Is it something that actually takes cognizance where you talk about it? Mm. And 
at the time that they discuss, uh, it's important for the couples to be able to state what they're feeling mm. about the situation, about each other, uh, so that whatever is inside can actually come out. It, 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 needs, to, it needs to unearth itself. Right. So once they're able to discuss that, then uh, to agree on coming up with some kind of alternatives on how to deal with the problem at hand. Mm. So they, uh, it, it's a time that they brainstorm, they look at different solutions and try that, uh, mm. try the solution. So you help them to implement uh, those alternatives that they've come, come to. In the process, I think again, as we, as we keep talking about forgiveness, being able mm. to release forgiveness right. is another aspect that uh, couples also uh, should do in order for the conflict to be closed. So that's, right. there's no unfinished business that keeps following. Being able to release the forgiveness and also to send out a blessing uh, mm. towards uh, the spouse, towards the marriage, so that it kind of completes the entire circle of how you uh, resolve conflict. First, the preparation of the heart, the couple comes together to resolve whatever uh, the issue may be through discussion and through forgiveness and through a release of blessing. Right, right. Yeah, that's very good. So, in addition to preparing the heart, uh, they start working on it. They come together to discuss, uh, talk about things, look at options, alternative solutions, uh, release and receive forgiveness, release, receive blessing. But let's just, um, you know, just, uh, I, I think this is, this is very practical. Let's say they sit down to discuss and then they're just not able to go past that point because probably they, you know, just another eruption takes place. Uh, what would we tell, I mean, how would they go from there? You know, let's say they attempt this, like somebody's listening is okay, I'm going to do this. And they sit down, you know, they've dealt with their heart. They come in and they begin to have, you know, start a loving discussion, but it just, uh, erupts what should they do how would they go past that point or that you know in their in a situation like that well, maybe this would be that would be the point when um, they would uh, need an external person mm. or, or like a pastor or right. a counselor to come into the picture because uh, it happens all the time i right. mean when there are small conflicts people do resolve or at least they think they've resolved it and usually when they come to a counselor to a pastor it's not just a problem that happened a few days ago right. it's probably unresolved conflict that has been going on for a while right. so the danger in this whole thing is you know believing that problems are resolved when they are not really resolved mm. and not really uh, the the relationship still suffering a lot of hurt and pain and uh, where each individual is not dealt with it right. um, and then uh, that's when you reach a point when you cannot see eye to eye anymore and you need a third person to right. um, someone to come and intervene and help each one of them acknowledge each other's feelings That's and right. bring them to a point uh, where they are ready to actually mm -hmm. start begin a conversation with each other. So ideally what we would do is um, people call us, mm -hmm. um, the call the counseling center and say that we've, we've been having issues, we'd like to talk and um, so we uh, give them an appointment to come and we try to see both of them together maybe and then later on if necessary see them individually and right. take them forward from there or if uh, they have no access to us we refer them to someone who um, close by who who is a counselor mm. someone who has uh, some kind of a biblical understanding of right. um, marriage and counseling uh, we refer them to them and right. that's yeah. how that, yeah. Yeah. so actually, i think you've you've brought up something very important that that, you know, when couples are not, I mean, not able to actually work through problems, uh, it's so important for them to reach out for help. And especially uh, given the fact that we are part of a church community, there are spiritual elders, pastors, trained people there who can help us. Uh, it's so important to reach out for help. And, and, I, and I really hope those of you watching today uh, would, uh, you know, if you are going through challenges, you know, take these th things that we've been talking about, but don't hesitate to reach out for help if you need to. Before we close the program, I really want to encourage those of you who've been watching us that there is hope. The God who designed marriage uh, is also the God who instructs us how to live marriage out. Uh, Proverbs 24th chapter tells us, through wisdom a house is built. By understanding it is established and by knowledge all the rooms are filled with pleasant riches. So we need wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and the Word of God is there to give us that 
God is there to give us that wisdom, knowledge and understanding in order to establish the home, the family, the marriage. Do you want to take some time here just to pray with those of us watching? Uh, just to pray for those of you who are married and uh, you're journeying together for God's wisdom, God's blessing, God's understanding uh, to come into your hearts and lives so that you can have the home that God wants you to have. Let's pray together, please. Father, we just thank you uh, for these few moments, God, where we could uh, talk about things and draw wisdom and understanding and knowledge uh, from your word and things you've given to us. Father, we pray right now for those who are watching us those who are married, who are journeying through life together, we pray the riches of your wisdom, your understanding, your knowledge, your blessing upon their homes, upon their marriage, upon their family, O oh God. And Father, we pray their homes will be established, strong, secure, filled, O oh God, with your blessing, abounding, God, with your joy. And Lord, we pray your purposes be released to them. Father, for those who are hurting, we may be going through difficult times in their marriage. We pray that you will send help to them. Help them to reach out and receive the help they need so that God, they can go past the mountains, go past these challenges and see the goodness of the Lord even in their homes, families and marriages. We pray this for them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us and until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. We have a publication called Marriage and Family. Uh, it's a, a very comprehensive book that starts from the very beginning of what marriage is. How do you go about preparing for marriage? How do you find your life partner? And then moving on into uh, essential ingredients that are necessary for building a strong marriage, uh, resolving conflicts, communication, uh, learning to put the past behind. We talk about things like uh, running your family, uh, personal finances, budgeting and so on. And then we move on to talk a little bit about uh, parenting and so on and how to pray for your children. Uh, so this book is, uh, is, is a very important, very useful and very concise.